Lesson 20.3, Task 1. Determine the number of solutions of nonlinear systems. A nonlinear system of equations has at least one equation that is nonlinear, such as a quadratic or an exponential equation. You can determine the solutions of a nonlinear system by graphing each function and identifying any point of intersection. The possible number of solutions for some nonlinear systems are shown. All right, so you can see on the first um, row here, you have a linear and a quadratic. So that means you have a line and a parabola. So you can see here there, there's never going to be three solutions because this has one turning point. So you have one, two solutions if the linear equation goes through the parabola. If the linear equation touches the parabola at the vertex, you have one solution. And if the linear equation and the quadratic do not touch, they do not intersect, then there is no solution to the system. If you have a linear and an exponential, there's never going to be three solutions, but there could be two solutions. You can see the linear goes through um, the exponential and it crosses here at two points. Here it crosses once. And again, if they don't touch, if the linear equation is below the exponential, we know the exponential is going to approach this um, line, but it's going to like not go past, not go below the x-axis because of the isotope there. So we know that these will not intersect at any point, even though it looks like this one's getting lower. So there would be no solution here. And then a quadratic and an exponential. So there's three or two um, solutions possible here, depending on what the equation is for each of the quadratic and the exponential. So you can see um, this one crosses here once, and then it crosses again twice, and then up here when it gets steeper as an exponential, it crosses a third time. Um, here's an example of where it crosses twice, once, and then crosses again, and then here, the quadratic is negative, so it's upside down. This one's going to touch one time, so it would have one solution. These two will never intersect, so there would be no solution. So those are just some possible number of solutions for nonlinear systems of equations. All right, so it says for two functions, f and g, explain why the x-coordinate of the point where the graphs of the equations y equals f of x and y equals g of x intersect are the solutions of the equation f of x equals g of x. All right, so if you take one equation and you subtract the other equation, if it gives you zero, then that's going to be an intercept. It's very easy visually to see that when they intersect, um, those are going to be the same. So those points, those two equations have those points in common which means it's a solution for each of the equations, so therefore it's a solution to the system. All right, so the next part says use a graphing calculator to graph f of x, g of x, and two vertical translations. Match each system with the number of solutions that the system has. All right, so let's look at our functions here. So we're going to pull up our calculator, and f of x equals x squared. So we're going to go to y equals, because we want a graph. So we're going to type in x squared. That's our quadratic function. And then we're going to type in 2x. That's our linear function. And we're going to hit graph to determine how many solutions. All right, so you can see it crosses once here, and it crosses again up here. So that one would be two solutions. All right, the next equation is x squared and 2x minus 1. So let's go back and graph. So we need to change the second equation to 2x minus 1. All right, so that's kind of hard to see. It kind of looks like it only crosses at one point. But let's kind of zoom in a little bit. Let's change our window here to negative 5. Whoops, I need, I need a positive 5 here. All right, and I need a negative 5. 
and a positive 5. So this is changing both my x and y axis, just kind of zooming in a little bit. All right, so you can see that that does just hit at one point. So this one's going to be one solution. And then we want to graph this last system of equations. So we're going to come down to the second one again. And this time we're going to change it to minus 2. All right, now we can see that they do not intersect. So that means there are no solutions to that system. All right, choose the correct words to complete the statement. It blank possible for a linear quadratic system to have more than two solutions because a quadratic has, all right, so it is not possible for a linear quadratic system to have more than two solutions because it has only one turning point. And if you go back up to the table and look at that, okay, a linear and a quadratic it can cross at two spots, one or none. So there's two solutions, one solution or no solution for a linear and quadratic function. All right, now it says use the graphing calculator to graph f of x, g of x in two translations and or reflections of g of x. Complete the statement with the correct whole number. All right, so we're going to go back to here, and that equation is going to stay the same, and we're going to clear this one and type in 2 to the x power. Remember, 2 to the x power is an exponent. It's not 2 times x, so make sure that when you're typing this in your cal calculator, you are graphing that correctly. All right, so now this is kind of hard to see here, so we're going to expand the window back. Um, let's go Y's maximum. Let's go back to 10. Still kind of hard to see, so let's um, expand our window on up a little bit more. Let's go up to 20. Okay, so you can see that it looks like it crosses here once, it crosses again here, and then it comes back through and crosses a third time. So for this one, it's going to be three solutions because there's three intersection points. This one says negative 2 to the x power. So we're going to do negative 2 raised to the x power. And that one does not look like it crosses at all, but again, let's change our window a little bit. We don't need it to be blown out quite that far anymore. Okay, so that makes it easier to see that they don't get anywhere close to touching. So this one would be zero intersection points. And then it says when f of x is this and g of x is this, the system has exactly one solution when k is about blank to the nearest whole number. So when does it have exactly one solution? All right, so if k shifts, this is the same function here, but with a vertical shift. So we would have to shift up one unit in order to make that happen. Then it says when f of x, actually you can go ahead and check this too if you want to see that. You can come down here. And do plus one. And that will show you the vertical shift, how it moves it up one. And now there's one intersection point. And that's what it said, exactly one intersection point. Now it says when f of x is this and g of x is this, there are, okay, so let's do one more. Now this is a two hit graph. 
And you can see there is one, two solutions now. All right, and that is all for task one. If you have any questions, let